And you did such a tremendous job. We couldn't have done it without you. I also want to thank all of those who showed up early today at 845 to do setup. They have a hard job. You can tell there is a lot of equipment to move around. This doesn't live here. We have to tear it down at the end and set it up again next week. So they're doing a great job. Why don't we give them a hand? We want to keep all those that are sick in prayer that aren't able to be here today. Uh, among them is Sister Laura. If you have not heard, she's been going through a lot. Uh, she had all of the toes on her left foot removed last week. And uh, she, she really needs our prayers. We need God to heal her body, to, to restore her, to give her strength. Um, please keep her in prayer. I would encourage you, reach out to her. Let her know you love her. When they have to start cutting off your body parts, that's when the church needs to show up and say that we got you on our heart. Probably before that, but this is a good time to start if we haven't. Amen. Uh, as Brother Kyle said, please remember your midweek hub. These are important. This is how we're staying connected in midweek. I know the Lord is going to move. We're going to have moves of the Spirit in our homes. We're just doing what the Book of Acts Church did. It's not nothing new. It's been done before. So I would encourage you to be a part of one of those. You can, you can join if you have the app. It's a big button right in the middle when you open it. You can tap there and join as well. Why don't we stand together today for the reading of the Word of the Lord. I'm going to be taking my text today from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43 and verses 16 through 21. I'm going to be reading from the ESV version. I'll be spending a lot of time in that version. If you don't have it, it's okay. It's the same. Isaiah 43 and verses 16 through 21. It says, Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse army and warrior, they lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. I'm going to take my title from verse number 19 today, and it is simply this, a new thing, a new thing. Why don't we put our Bibles to the side and lift our hands and ask the Lord to speak to us today. Mighty God, we are so grateful for your spirit that is here. We're thankful for your faithfulness, Lord, that you show up in our midst whenever we gather together in your name. We pray today that you would anoint our minds and our ears and our hearts to receive your word. Let it change us today. Let it encourage us today, Father. We want to leave this place better than we came. We pray your will would be done this morning. And in Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. It is difficult to not think about this season that our church is in right now. I know it's weighed heavily on my heart and my mind since I first got the news, and I imagine that's probably a pretty normal response. I've thought a lot about the logistics of it all, where we're going to be, how we're going to do midweek, getting moved out, moving the mobile kit around, getting all that finished and set up, and everything in between. Even at General Conference, where I was able to breathe a sigh of relief after the move out and receive from the Lord and the services there, I was never fully present. On Thursday night, I asked the Lord to speak to me and give me a word for us today. And during the excellent worship, he brought this passage of scripture to my mind. He answered my prayer, and then he followed it up with a wonderful outpouring of his spirit, because God is just that good. As soon as I woke up Friday morning... I knew it was time to head home, so we packed up our trailer and made the 300-plus mile drive back refreshed and ready to be with you today. When we look at this passage in Isaiah, there are a few things that stand out that I believe speak to us right where we are as a church today. I want to break it down into sections and examine it together, starting in verses 16 
and 17. Verses 16 and 17. They said, Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Now these verses, to give you some context, are a reference to Israel crossing the Red Sea after they left Egypt. The Egyptians, realizing that they'd been spoiled and they'd lost their free labor force, figured, hey, we better go get those people back. So they rallied their army with chariots and horses, and they chased the Israelites down. Their plan was to conquer them and drag them back, kicking and screaming if necessary. But God wasn't interested in Egyptian plans. As they stood on the banks of the Red Sea, the Israelites began to fear they could see the approaching army. There's a lot of dust, a lot of noise. They had nowhere else to go, but God is a way maker. When it seems like there's no solution to an impossible situation, he creates possibility. Our text says, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Notice the use of that adjective, mighty. He's letting us know he's not just going to make a way through small obstacles. He didn't make a way through a puddle. He didn't make a way through a creek. He made a way through mighty waters. He's going to smash through some mighty obstacles in this church's future. There is nothing that's going to stand in the way of the work and the will of our God. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 4 says, Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. What obstacle could be too great for a God who can level mountains and fix rough plains and take things down to a nice, comfortable space where we can walk through unhindered and undeterred? In the same chapter as our text this morning, just a handful of verses up, Isaiah also records the Lord saying this in chapter 43 and verse number 2. Isaiah 43 and 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Here's the thing. In order for God to show his power, there need to be situations where his power is required. We all love a good miracle. Anybody here not enjoy a miracle? I know I do. Who doesn't love a good sign or a wonder? I remember for years we prayed, God, show us signs and wonders. Well, it's time. There needs to be a need for God to work a miracle. There needs to be a problem that we can't solve on our own. And that's the part of miracles that we don't like so much, needing them. I love how scripture doesn't try and sugarcoat things. There's a lot of folks out there that would have you believe today that as long as you say a little prayer or decide to live for God, your life going forward is going to be great. No more trouble. No more problems. Just whisper a little thing up to heaven and it's going to be okay. And then when reality hits and trouble comes, people's faith gets shaken. They get disillusioned. They start to go, well, God can't do everything. He can't do anything because this didn't go the way that I thought it should. Yet Isaiah is recording God telling us when you pass through the waters and when you walk through the fire. That's a declaration of certainty right there. It would be easy for us as a church to stay locked in on what we're going through and lose focus on anything else. We're passing through the waters and we're walking through fire. Oh no, I'm shooketh. Let me encourage you for a moment today. Whether you're a member of this church family or you're just getting to know us, God is in control. God is in control. He wants me to let everybody in this building know today that he's going to be with us. And more than that, he's going to be with you. The rivers aren't going to overwhelm you. The flames aren't going to consume you. That is his promise to this church this day. I will be with you. He's doing a new thing. I think we ought to lift our hands all across this place and give him some praise. Thank you, Lord. 
We're grateful that your hand is upon us. We thank you that your spirit is with us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As excited as I am at the prospect of him taking us through what we're going through with power and strength and extinguishing our enemies as he says he will in verse number 17 of our text, there's also a little bit of instruction for us to follow while he works. Isaiah 43 and verses 18 and 19. 43, 18, and 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. If I were to identify a core of our text today, the part that the Lord spoke to me the loudest, these two verses would be it. You see, our human nature is that when God is moving us from one place to another, we for some reason start to get hung up on where he's taken us from. Israel was no exception. When God delivered them from Egypt, repeatedly they complained to Moses. When we were in Egypt, we had this. When we were in Egypt, they gave us that. It's almost as if the moment they were free from their past bondage, they started wishing they were back in it. Now hear me out. I'm not calling the last 20 years of our past bondage. It's not what I'm saying. (laughs) Pastor would throw his Bible at me. That also wouldn't be true. We've had tremendous revival, and our pastor has faithfully led us in the will of God. Did you know that from the moment we moved into 2340 Technology Parkway, our church tripled in size? There's a lot to be proud of behind us. Yet God tells Isaiah, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. The NIV version of verse 18 says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Therein lies the key. We don't need to throw the past away. What God is going to do in us next is built on the foundation and legacy that has been laid for this church over the last 20 years. We wouldn't be able to go where God is taking us if it hadn't been for what has already been done. The instruction here isn't to discard who we are, but it's to not get hung up on what we had. Well, Pastor Matt, I just don't know how we're going to be able to survive without that building. I don't know how we can live for God without having a comfortable home. I'm going to tell you exactly how you and I and this body of believers is going to make it. It's right in verse number 19. It says, behold, look here, listen up. I am doing a new thing. The legacy of the last two decades isn't a location, it's a people. It is a body, the body of Christ. This group of believers that love God with all their heart and soul and mind and strength. This is our foundation. And this people that God has built up over the last 20 years, shepherded through the careful care of his man that we call pastor is ready for a new thing. Look at what God says about the new thing he's doing. Verse 19 continues and says, Now it springs forth. Do you perceive it? When something springs forth, it happens suddenly. It's quick. It's fast. You didn't see it coming. It just kind of happened. This new thing he's doing in our church could certainly be described as springing forth. One day we were having church one way, and the next, it was different. Not because anybody failed, not because somebody did something wrong, but because God said, I'm done with this, and I'm ready for a new thing. A new thing. It's time, church, for a new thing. (laughs) 
And it's not just this new thing because he gets this real strong statement right after. I'm going to new I'm going to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? The amplified version says, "Will you not be aware of it?" God is saying in no uncertain terms, I am in this. Can't you tell? Do you not see that this is me? I am doing this for your good. I am doing this for your benefit. This is my new thing. He goes on to say, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You see, he's not just going to do a new thing, but he's going to provide everything we need along the way. Water to quench our thirst. Food to fill our soul. He's going to give us a place and a time and everything that we need to get us to where he's taking us. He knew it was coming and he is paving the way. He's in control. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 1. Isaiah 43 and 1, reading from the NIV. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. I'm not afraid because I know he's in control. But much more than that, we're his. We belong to him. And he's never going to abandon his own. He's going to hold on to us. He's going to make a way for us. He's going to provide for us. He's going to do more than that. He's going to bless us and pour out upon us. When Israel was in transition... Much like we are, he made sure to let them know this. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verses 6 through 8. Deuteronomy 31, 6 through 8 in the ESV. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. We've got to be strong and courageous because he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. He's never going to let us down. He's never going to leave us in the lurch. He is faithful. He is powerful and he is in control. Somebody give him a shout of praise right now. Glory. Hallelujah. Not only is he going to make a way where it seems impossible, not only do we need to keep our eyes forward and not get lost in the past while he does a new thing, but we need to know that it's all for a purpose. Isaiah 43 and verses 20 and 21. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Now this right here, this gets me all kinds of fired up. I get super excited. Did you catch what he threw out there in verse number 20? The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. Now that's kind of weird. Why are we talking about jackals and ostriches? What is this, the Lion King? Why would they do that? Why would wild animals give honor to God in all of this? Well, he answers it right after. For I will give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. You know what he's saying here? Because we've moved into a place where we, he has to create provision for us, people that aren't a part of us are going to reap the benefits. Those jackals and ostriches had water to drink because God put it there 
for his people. God is going to bless this church so abundantly, so miraculously, that it's going to start spilling over to the people around us. The city of Hollister is going to find rivers they never knew and food they never had, and they're going to drink just because God is blessing his people. When his spirit... When his spirit pours out in our services, it's going to splash on those that aren't even here. People in the homes all around us that we did an outreach to put our, our post-its and our postcards all over, they're going to feel something happening over here at the school. They're going to hear the noise of it. Their thirst is going to draw them to the waters that God laid out so his people could drink. And they're going to come and they're going to experience it. They're going to become a part of us and they're going to be blessed because we're blessed. As he does this new thing, the provision and blessing he rains down is going to draw men in. It's going to pull on them. What is that over there? Who are those people? Why do they seem to be so well fed and, and without thirst? Give me what you have. This isn't suffering this isn't persecution. This is a vehicle for revival. It's time to get on the wilderness train. Hey, we're going out where there was nothing so God could make what never was to reach the lost, to grow the church, to draw all men unto him. But why this way? That's the question we start asking very young. Why? Why? Anybody here who's ever had small children knows that is the, the worst. It is an unanswerable question. Doesn't matter what you say. Because, son, this. No. Why? There's always more. Why? Why would we have to travel this hallway, journey through this foreign land, and require God's hand and provision to carry us through? What could the reason be? Look at verse number 21. It says that they might declare my praise. This new thing that God is doing is going to take us to places we've never been. He's going to pour out his power like never before. We're going to reap harvest like we never imagined. And the purpose of all of this, the reason for this new thing is so that we might declare his praise. Because by the time he's done with us, there will be no question. There will be nothing left to say but glory to God. He did it. It was all him. His power. His ability. His provision. His greatness. We're not going to be able to help it, Brother Art. It's going to gush out of us. We'll be sitting there in the middle of a midweek hub going, did, can you believe what God did on Sunday? Did you see that? We had to book the swimming pool to baptize all those people. Can you believe it, Brother Isaiah? Can you believe what God did? Can, did you see that person that he healed? Who was that random family that walked in off the street? They were walking by and they heard the noise of it and they came in here and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and God changed them forever. It was all God. And it's not going to take to the other side to see it. It's going to happen all along the way. In fact, as I begin to close today, and invite our musicians to come. I can't think of a better time to praise God for his goodness, his greatness, and his provision than right now. I don't need to wait to see the miraculous. I know it's coming. 
I don't need to wait for a new demonstration of God's power. He's already shown it. I don't need to wait for God to do this new thing because he's already done a lot behind me and there's a whole bunch more before me. Remember, he's doing a new thing. He's going to make a way through impossible things. He's going to build something greater on the foundation laid in our past. And it's all for a single purpose. So that we can utter his praise. So that we can know how good he is. So that it's going to be uncontrollably bursting from inside of us. God is great. God is good. God is faithful. I've got a little song on my heart. And I want to sing it. I want to have a little old-fashioned you know, for me, that's a different kind of old-fashioned, depending on how old you are. But old-fashioned for me, kind of worship service. It starts out a little bit like this. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. 